What if in this divisive message of the gospel of salvation, people hate it, people want to outlaw it, 57 nations in the United Nations want to make the preaching of the gospel illegal in the world by order of UN resolution. Did you know that? I thank God for Jay Sekulow and the ACLJ who did great work to try to stop that this year. God bless them. Can you imagine the United Nations, the most ungodly body of people gathered together in one spot, the united nothing, the unnecessary UN. They entertained the meeting. Should the gospel of Jesus, the preaching of the cross, be legal in 57 Muslim nations of the world? Unbelievable. Why is it so divisive? You want to know why? Strip away the faces and strip away the attire and strip away the boundaries of nations. It has nothing to do with that. Listen, this is what it has everything to do with. What if, my friend, what if you are more valuable than you have thought you were? Oh, pastor, what are you doing preaching some high esteem message? No, you listen to me carefully. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? That's for sure. But I didn't say anything about your value. Look, you may not value me much. Maybe I don't value you much. Guess what? That's not the point. We don't have, listen, God doesn't have favorites. Check this out. What if you and I have been wrong all along? And the value of who we are, we have set on a low place. Maybe you have esteemed yourself as not being that important. What if you're dead wrong and I'm dead wrong and you are ultimately, inf infinitely, absolutely more important? To who? To who? Can I meet that person who thinks so highly of me? I'd love you to meet him. It's the Lord. Put the message together. Put together what you know. Jesus is going to the cross. He's going to die. People want to kill him. And by the way, you've been studying this Bible with me, this Luke's gospel, the people who want to kill him are nasty people. Religiously, they're fantastic on the outside. But inside, they're wicked and they're, they're uh, arrogant and they're selfish. They want to kill him. Everything Jesus has done has been awesome. Find me one thing that you don't like that Jesus did. Amazing. He's going to the cross. They want to kill him. I want to say to you this morning, behind the scenes in the invisible world, there is a world of War and a world of debate and a world of action taking place in the spiritual realm. And listen, your heart, your life, your mind, your very existence is the playing field. You are the prize. You are the one that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if you would believe in him, you would not perish but have everlasting life. And we'll read about that more in a moment. Actually, I just quoted it. I got excited and I ran ahead and there it is. Okay, I just said it. He loves you that much. Yeah, but I don't think I'm that high. I don't care what you think about you. God valued you so much that salvation at the cross was not only reasonable to God, you were worth it to God. There's something he sees in me. There's something he sees in you that he can redeem, that he can clean, that he can fix, that he can begin anew. He didn't die on the cross because we've got something that is redeemable by our talent or whatever it is. No, no, no. What I mean by that is you were created in the image of God. You are created in the image of God and God wants you to experience his salvation. And the truth of the matter is if you're that valuable to God and Satan hates God, then doesn't Satan hate you? Then doesn't it beg to announce that Satan would then do anything to thwart the plan of God? Doesn't it make sense that Satan would want to undermine, destroy your marriage, your children, your husband, your wife, your place in this world? Satan's at work to destroy the things that have been going on in your life. God loves you. Satan hates you. 